Forsooth, we return again in a Stolocaster where we are being visited by Thomas Blog. Let us see what this game has in store for us today as we move on here. Good dawning, D Blog. How may I do you service this day? I hope you will do me service, Dr. Foreman. For at my last consultation, you served me very ill. Ah. Indeed. Your prediction that Raleigh and Essex would succeed in capturing those Spanish treasure ships did put me in a most lamentable position. I had my tailor fashion me these fine new robes, and now I have not the money to pay him for it. Then I'm heartily sorry for it, sir. Though your new robes are indeed very fine. Is that a different shade of black, or...? And I know not how, but my wife Alice has lately learned of our perilous <laughs> financial situation. Ah, Oops. has she? Aye, and she has had me petition the Archbishop for a promotion. Tis her reckoning that if I were promoted to Bishop, the increased living would enable me to settle our debts. That would seem wise under the circumstances. And was your petition successful? It was. At least at first. Indeed, His Grace did have me believe he is minded to make me Bishop of Salisbury. The Bishopric of Salisbury? But that is excellent well, is it not? It would be very well, forsooth. But many months have passed, and the Archbishop gives yet no sign of granting the vacant Bishopric to anybody. I see. And he does not say when the matter may be decided? Nay, indeed he does not. Whenever I raise the question with his grace, he says he needs time to consider the various episcopal and doctrinal matters concerning such an appointment. All the while, he has me performing additional duties that I dare not refuse, lest I lose his favour. And Mistress Blag has sent him pies upon numerous occasions. And yet the Archbishop is not moved? Oh, he must be a very hard man indeed. For your wife's pies are well renowned for their powers of persuasion. Now, <laughs> let us see what the stars can tell us. Will Thomas Blagg, Dean of Rochester, be granted the Bishopric of Salisbury? Let's just remember that this is the same wife that Simon is banging on occasion. Right. Uh, and we... <laughs> We told the Archbishop not to hire Thomas Black. Playing both sides of this battle, well, I mean, that should make it, me, it easy for me to, to get this uh, prediction. On the other hand, um, Thomas Black, we only need 20 points. If we could score that by making a most pleasing prediction, that would be great. Let's see what the stars have to say about this. The House of Relationships, a man of authority, the Archbishop, pleasantness, the Black's relationship with the Archbishop will remain amicable. Okay. House of the Quirant, this represents honor and really, really religiosity. Black has demonstrated his godliness. House of Ambitions, this advise patience, this advises patience to turn Black's life around. Black's professional ambitions will be realized if he exercises patience. I don't think that'll happen. House of Processions. This represents a deception being uncovered. A deception concerning the theft of goods has been uncovered. Oh, we could tell him that. Good. House of God's Help. Um, this indicates intelligence... Sudden change of fortune, victory, transformation and perspective. God will help Black succeed by radically transforming the Archbishop's opinions of Black in Black's intelligence. Thus raised in the Archbishop's esteem, Black will be granted the Bishopric, Bishopric uh, which, can, which comes with a considerable increase in pay. Mm. House of Travel represents a woman... Black's wife, Alice. Black is advised to travel with his wife. Mm. 
Well, playing both sides of the fence here, we can tell Block that his deceptions have been uncovered, which is true, and that's a correct reading of the stars. We don't have to tell him who spilled the beans. None of the others really speak to me. This is this is gonna backfire. This could be uh, the right path. Black is advised to travel with his wife. His wife might be able to uh, sway the archbishop with her own ways. God will help Black succeed. This is probably what he would want to hear. But it could just as well backfire. God will help Black succeed by radically transforming the Archbishop's opinion of Black's intelligence. Thus raised in the Archbishop's esteem, Black will be granted the Bishopric, which comes with a considerable increase in pay. I wonder if that would score me 20 points. But I'm gonna go with no, let's just take B and hope that this is the right choice. You will never be granted the Bishopric of Salisbury, I fear, for the Archbishop has discovered some irregularities in the management of Rochester Cathedral. Some missing furnishings, I think? Well, I, uh, I mean to say, um, if, uh, if indeed that be so, then tis most egregious. I will have some very stern words with my chaplain. Uh, Worry not, sir. The stars indicate that his grace would wish to avoid any unpleasantness. As is customary with church scandal, he will doubtless remain quiet on the matter for the sake of reputation. Ah. Well, of course I too would not want to bring shame upon the church. If there be such vile, false rumours circulating about me, it would be wrong not to consider the attention that my promotion to bishop would invite. I own that I am shocked and disappointed by this, but I must thank you for forewarning me. Okay, that's exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah. The querent, Thomas Black, did wish to know if he will be granted the Bishopric of Salisbury. I did advise the querent that he will never be granted the Bishopric of Salisbury owing to his embezzlement of church funds. Methinks the querent was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. Hey, and that gave us the 20 points we needed. Would that I had not replaced all the silver candlesticks with pewter and then left the two on the altar. He's back. Lancelot returns to England. Good morrow, Mr. Moore. You are returned from Italy, I see. I and I had the most enlightening experience. My tutors taught me all about those ancient Romans and whatnot. Indeed, tis a changed man you see before you now. A worldly man of culture and learning. Mayhap you would benefit from taking a tour of Italy yourself, Foreman. Alas, Mr. Moore. I must remain in London to care for my queerants. As to wit, what brings you this day? Well, no sooner did I return to London than I did become acquainted with the most wondrous creature. A lady who has been lately widowed. Ah, let me just take some notes here. Is this one dark or fair? Auburn with eyes of green, mayhap? I do not believe there's yet been an auburn-haired maid. Fie, Mr. Foreman. Prithee show more respect for ladies than to view them as mere collections of physical charms. Beauty alone is of nothing to a man such as I. Nay, my heart does belong to a worldly woman of culture and learning. Her head almost as striking as the soft hair and radiant eyes that adorn it. Indeed, her gift of understanding is so strong she can listen to my sonnets for hours on end. She can, can she? 
Forsooth, the lady does show great strength of mind indeed. <laughs> and how might I advise you? I would have you tell me whether I should marry her. For, as you know, I have offered my troth to ladies in the past, and it has not ended well for me. So, this time I did tell myself, Lancelot, you will proceed with caution. You will know the lady for at least a month before you think of wedding her, and then you'll go directly to Foreman for his counsel. Then let us consult Wise the choice. stars now. Should Lancelot Moore marry this wondrous and worldly widow? Hmm. Should he? Should I marry the wondrous widow? Well, if he if she can listen to his sonnets, well, hold on to that. I say, House of Hidden Motives suggests deception. Deceitful hidden motives are at play. House of Finances represents emotions. This indicates the reverse of patience, impatience. Moore is allowing his emotions to rule his finances, putting them at risk by acting impatiently. Uh huh. House of Wills and Inheritance. This represents a surprising event and indicates death. The match will provoke an unexpected death resulting in an inheritance. Okay, so what we're reading here is that the uh, the widow has a hidden motive for marrying him. She will want to seal his finances and she will kill him to get that inheritance. I see. I am wondering if this is Emma Sharp. Right? Who is walking around killing her husbands? I wish she hadn't mentioned her by name, because then we would have known for sure. House of Relationships indicates intelligence. This uh, suggests an aspiration to greatness. Represents a romantic partner, the widow. The widow is an intelligent woman who aspires to greatness through her relationships. House of God's Grace. This represents a maturing man, Lancelot Moore. If God favors the marriage. It would make a man of more. Yeah. House of Relationship with the Quarren. This indicates a cruel middleman. Middlemage man, me. The star suggests I have cruel intentions towards my current. That's a lot more. What? No, that's not true. I think. This one throws me off because I do think that um, Lancelot could end up showing some maturity. That's kind of what I'm reading into his speech. He he waits a little bit now before just walking into a relationship. He he looks at more than just her looks, uh, basically, and that shows growth. I'm not sure where, where this one comes from. And this might be the outlier that then makes me think that this is not the correct reading. We should go with A. Yeah. Hmm. I wanted to be positive, but... You must not yeah. marry this lady, sir. You are a wealthy man, and she has designs upon your fortune that may result in your untimely death. <gasps> he got! Verily? I am afeard so. You must take care not to let your emotions lead you astray. But she seems so. She told me she... Are you sure? You did not put a planet in the wrong house or whatnot? I? Quite <laughs> sure. Oh, well indeed, tis most lamentable. Oh, what a waste of such fine eyes. Mayhap Emma has a sister. It's Emma. It was totally Emma. Called it. The querent did wish to know whether she he should marry his beloved a worldly widow. I did advise the querent against marrying the widow. Methinks the Quirin was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. Letter of recommend. Oh! Letter of recommendation indeed. Look at this! Something new has happened. Lesson of more. We. Oh, this was number three with him. I thought it was number five for some reason. Okay. No, it, it was. Anyway. He says, I shall respect her too much to bind her within the shackles of marriage. Mayhap, then she will let me lie with her. Oh, probably not, Emma. Sibyl's old glass, oh, when 
she tries her best. Tis then she tries her From being overdressed to poisoning her guests. Ambition, ambition, now I want to have another look here. Uh, Lancelot Moore. Yeah, look at that. We skipped number four. Because we sent him away, I suppose. We didn't get uh, case number four with him. Interesting. I thought maybe we would have to go through all six with him, regardless of any circumstances. But here we show that that's clearly not the case. That, may, that means that we could end up killing a patient before number before we we've seen their entire case history. That's kind of cool. I thought maybe they would be locked in and we would have to see them all no matter what, meaning we couldn't kill a patient early on. That might not be true. Anyway, I've been doing my best to not kill my patients. We have had that one guy who killed himself. Not my fault. Good day, Mistress Fortescue. I do hope you may help me, Dr. Foreman, for I am mightily afflicted with fever and pain. Yes, I see. Your face is a trifle red in colour. When did your troubles begin? At a dinner party, perchance? Nay, it was at a luncheon. The one I gave this day. I sought to play a trick upon my friend, Lady Emma Dyer, and I worry God is punishing me for my japery. And what manner of jape did Lady Emma Dyer. Oh, that's Emma. Sharp. Uh, she Lord married Lord Henry Dyer. Right. I knew I'd heard that name. Okay, just to give it a... This is the first time I pause a thing, but it's important to know who she's talking about. All right, this is the uh, <laughs> serial widower. <laughs> you play on your friend at this luncheon of yours. Pray, describe the ruse to me. Oh. Well... I came upon the idea when I took receipt of a trunk full of exotic goods from the New World. Lovely gifts sent home to me by my gallant husband. Know you of my husband, Captain Henry Fortescue? He is a great friend of Sir Walter Raleigh, of course. I, I mm. think you have mentioned him once or twice, madam. The trunk contained a parcel of dried fruits. Full red in colour they were, and with them a note of warning. On it was writ that these fruits, if not consumed in moderation, can provoke a hot, pricking fever when ingested. Ah, yes. I have read of this fruit in the writings of Spanish explorers. Capsicum Icaramba Mequema is the botanical name, I believe. I am well known for serving the most original dishes at my table. Hence my guests were not surprised when I invited them to try my exotic fruit. I served them each a sweet pie containing one of these, uh, capsicum... I caramba me quema. But I made sure Emma received a pie containing the very largest fruit, and I the very smallest one. I see. You hoped to occasion a fever in your friend while escaping the same fate yourself. And yet this ruse did not succeed, I take it. Nay, it did not, Dr. Foreman. Most of my guests dared only take one bite of their pies before abandoning them, finding themselves unequal to the challenge. But Emma ate hers all up, as did I. I was sure I would be safe, and that she would turn red and begin to perspire most shamefully, but she remained as cool as a cucumber. But I... But you, madam? But I began to feel such pain in my mouth and throat. My face and eyes turned red. Moisture gathered on my brow and bosom, and damp marks appeared on my bodice. I could not conceal it from my guests. T'was humiliating. How distressing for you, madam. Let us now seek a solution to this mystery in the stars. What might explain the querent's affliction? Hmm, civil is always fun. All right, I think... I think what they're talking about is chilies, right? They, she's, she's been sent a red fruit, chilies, uh, and, and she tried to give a big one to Emma while giving a small one to herself. I suspect that Emma switched the plates. So let's see if we can tell her that. At luncheon, I was stricken with a pain and fever. What is the cause of my suffering? 
Uh, Scorpio, the ruler of the reproductive system, this suggests the illness will not last long. The current is experiencing a short-lived attack uh, of lusty passions, a condition that can occasion bodily heat and blushing of the face. <laughs> okay. Uh, rule of the head, witchcraft, and the possibility of death. The current has been bewitched. And then rule of the throat represents an imbalance of yellow bile cold air. The current is suffering from a kind of quincy uh, caused by an abundance of blood flowing to the head and throat. It can, it can occasion swelling, fever, and redness in the face. Huh. Lusty passions... Bewitched and Quincy. This is probably the one. Lusty passion seems to yeah, this, and it's the reproductive system. This indicates that she is uh, feeling well, sexual feelings for Emma or someone else at the dinner party, and that's. At least from her description, that's not at all what's going on. I, it, it has to be the chili, and it, it happened in the throat, an imbalance of stuff, and I don't know what Quincy means, but the abundance of blood flowing to the head and throat that can occasion swelling, fever, and redness in the face. This sounds like the symptoms of eating a chili. I don't know if I would call it swelling as such, and fever. And if... I don't honestly know what happens when you eat a chili. Is it blood that goes to your head and throat that causes the pain? Maybe? I don't know. This is the one we're picking, though. Let's dive in and see what happens. One moment, madam, while I consult that Spanish book I mentioned earlier. The one recounting travels in the New World. Ah, yes. That is interesting. What is interesting, Dr. Foreman? The stars say you have Quincy, and this book confirms my suspicions as to what provoked it. Madam, tis not the larger fruits that occasion pain when consumed. Tis the small ones, such as the one you had baked into the pie for yourself. You right. mean to say the smaller fruits are more dangerous than the larger ones? How strange! I forgot about that. Verily, how topsy-turvy! The pain will be gone by the morrow, but in the meantime, you may find relief by washing your mouth out with wine. Burgundy wine? Or will an ordinary mm. claret suffice? Always a good recommendation. Any wine will do, madam. God give ye good even, Mistress Fortescue. <laughs> the doctor prescribed me wine. What a... If, I, or if, if only I could go to the doctor and be prescribed wine as a treatment for whatever ails me. The querent did present with symptoms of fever and pain that began during a luncheon she hosted. I did diagnose Quincy... Provoked by consumption of a small yet dangerous New World fruit. Methinks the Quirin was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. This might give us a little bit of recommendation. Hey! I believe that is number six. I should not be... Uh, I should not like to be seen drinking cheap clarinet, uh, claret before dinner. I think I will have to cook a open a bottle of wine. I think I will have to cook open a bottle of Burgundy. Oh, okay. Humphrey Bell, who is this comely youth? Mary hath a little shy, but pleasing to the eye. His eyes, his eyes, his hair, his hair, his shape, his shape, his shape, his form, so smooth, he has a sweetheart, pray tell us the truth. All right, this late in the game, we introduce the new character, Humphrey Bell. Good morrow, young sir. Ah, methinks this is your first consultation, uh, Mr. Um... Uh, hum Humphrey Bell, sir. And how may I do you service this day, Mr. Bell? I want to get lean in that. You wish to become lean, you say? <laughs> and why would you need to be any leaner than you are now? You do not appear at all over plump. Indeed, you appear to be a young man in the full vigour of health. Yay, but I do the lady parts, though, innit? Uh, you do the lady parts. Oh, I see. You are a player who plays feminine roles upon the stage. Ah, ah yes, I think I recognize you now. You play for Lord Chamberlain's men, do you not? The company of players led by Will Shakespeare, Richard Burbage, and Will Kemp, among others. Aye, sir. I play for them as a hired man, and next month I'm to play a fairy queen in a play we're doing for Lord Hunston at his daughter's wedding. 
But our boss man, Burbage, says I'm too plump for the role. Humphrey, your girth does make it difficult for an audience to imagine you getting up out of your fairy throne, let alone flying. Hmm, yes, I think I understand. It would imperil the audience's suspension of disbelief, thus breaking the fourth wall, as you players so call it. Ah, sir, indeed. Mr Burbage worries much for them scenery walls, for he says my rear end is of such a size, tis liable to smash right through him. Anyways, Mistress Burbage <laughs> told me that to fit into her gown, she bids herself chunder after eating. Might you give me some herbs for that or something? And Mistress Burbage would be Richard Burbage's wife, I presume. Well, to judge what would be most effective in your case, I shall need to consult the stars. What should Mr. Humphrey Bell do to become leaner? Interesting case. Bossman says I'm too plump for my fairy queen to play a fairy queen. Okay, what, what can I do to make myself leaner indeed? Well, Scorpio, ruler of the bowels, says this advises a mild balance of phlegm. Humphrey may provoke upward, downward purging from his fundament by inducing an imbalance of phlegm. Hmm. What about this one here, ruler of the stomach? Mild imbalance of cold air. Humphrey may induce upward purging from his stomach by consuming canis sico. Excrementum to induce imbalance of coder. Canis sico excrementum. I am thinking about what that might be. Virgo, ruler of the digestive system. Condition is chronic. Humphrey's condition has been provoked by chronic overconsumption of food. He must commit to underconsumption of food if he hopes to become leaner. I wonder if this is like a laxative where he like oh, this one is upward purging no so it's not like well none of these sounds like anything I would ever do so eating less is not really the best solution and he doesn't seem fat so he doesn't he isn't like overeating well, let's just go with the uh, rule of the stomach here. Canis sico excrement. Canis is canine sico excrement. Oh, are we talking about eating dog poop? I hope not. Oh, God. Mr. I don't Bell, know, man. I will prescribe you something to induce upward purging. It will serve to void your stomach of its contents and by and by you will become leader. Pray, call by your local apothecary and make purchase of some canis sicko excrementum, or dried dog excrement, as it's more commonly known. Yep. You yep. have to mix it with water and take it up the nose after each meal. What do you mean? Like dog doings? Are you playing about or something? You would have me snort flipping dog turd? I will not lie. That sounds well mad. Hmm. Mayhap if you were to mix the excrement with a little honey? That can oft help the medicine go down a trifle easier. No disrespect or nothing, but I ain't doing that, Doctor. Not even to be a fairy queen. Give you good day, sir. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. I don't know what to say. The Kruin sought the assistance to become leaner in order to play the role of a fairy queen in one of Mr. Shakespeare's plays. I did advise the current to induce upward perching by taking dark excrement up the nose after each meal. Methinks the current took my advice rather ill. No freaking kidding. What is what is in that doctor man? He's away with the fairies or something. Mayhap he knows one who could play for Mr. Burbage. Yeah. Okay. But if Essex disobeys the Queen, she'll put him in the ground. 
Welcome back, Robert. Good day, my lord. I must own, your lordship's visit to my chambers does surprise me, for I'd believed, well, indeed, all of England believes, that you are in Ireland at present. Did anyone see me? No? Good. Now, bid your manservant close the shutters. As your lordship pleases. William! William! Uh, pray close the shutters! Yes, all of them! And fetch us some candles! I pray the counsel you give me this day be wise, Sarah, for I find myself in the most desperate of predicaments. And the last advice I gave you? That of offering to lead a military campaign to put down the Irish Rebellion? I trust it worked to win back the Queen's favour? Indeed, the parade given to send you off was most impressive. I, I was there. Uh, did you see me? I did wave at you. <laughs> Nay, I do not imagine you would have seen me. So great were the crowds. Yes, my offer to lead the campaign was well received by the Queen. But there was a fatal flaw in your advice. Oh, and this flaw was... Is it not obvious? I had to verily go to that midge-ridden bog-hole and try to put down the Irish. God's breath! Have you seen the Irish? They are savages! That Irish chieftain O'Neill and his band of fen-born brutes are especially bad. Forsooth, they sound most fearsome. Now, it is a mercy you escaped with your life and are now back home safe in England. Nay, I am not yet safe in England, I fear. For when the Queen finds out that I made a truce with O'Neill, heaven only knows how ill she will take it. Even my leaving Ireland without her permission will doubtless vex her. Then the Queen has not been informed of your return? Nay, she knows yet nothing of it. I am at present taking refuge with my sister, the Countess of Devonshire, at her country estate. But I cannot hide there forever. Hence I am come to you this day so that the stars may advise me on how I may extract myself from my current predicament and win back the favour of the Queen. Then let us see what the stars advise. Uh, how might Lord Devereux escape the displeasure of Her Majesty the Queen and regain her favour? <laughs> Isn't that the same question we had last time? 65 out of 100, yeah. How might I regain the Queen's favour? House of God's help. This represents a vain authority and advises patience. God will help Devereux if he appeals to the Queen's vanity and ex exercises patience. Yeah, that sounds good. House of the Quirant. This represents a female malcontent, the Queen. Robert Devereux must use his best asset to ward off the Queen's anger, his magnificent body. House of Hopes. This represents death in reverse. Devereux may revive his hope for a billion career. All is not lost. Hmm. The stars are very uh, sexual often. Let's try something that not, it doesn't involve banging the queen. House of Relationships. This suggests intelligence and represents rebellion. Devereux must contrive a way to make the queen see his disobedience within the context of their personal relationship rather than as an act of disloyalty to the crown. Hmm. House of Legacy indicates optimism and confusion. Devereux impels his legacy with tendency towards confused optimism. Hmm. House of Legal Confrontations. This suggests violence. Robert Devereux risks being subject to the violence of the law. House of Unborn Children. This represents a surprising reversal in political events. Devereux may reverse the political situation back to his advantage by having the Queen look upon him as a son she never had. Wow, both of these seems like somewhat bad advice, to be honest. Uh, this, again, has to do with seducing the queen. All is not lost, which is good. P. 
appeal to the queen's vanity and exercise patience. This sounds good. Contrive a way to make the queen see his obedience within the context of their personal relationship rather than as an act of disloyalty to the crown. That's nice and all. And this is true. Devereux impairs his legacy with tendency towards confused optimism. Yes. Um, but you want the queen to see you as the son she never had? I guess we're taking B. The stars foretell of violence enacted by officers of the law. Ah, verily. Tis doubtless a beheading. Forsooth, I do enjoy a good beheading. Well, tis likely oh. to be a trifle more elaborate than that. If the queen is particularly vexed, it will start with a quick hanging until just before the point of death, followed by a disemboweling and emasculation. Ah, yes, of course. Whereafter the gentleman is invited to watch his own entrails and privy parts being lightly grilled upon an open fire before he is chopped into four separate pieces. A quartering, I think you mean? Which, as etiquette dictates, are then to be parceled up and sent as gifts to any friends and family members unable to attend the ceremony. Ah, yes, splendid. An execution with all the trimmings. Verily, whilst a simple beheading can be a most elegant entertainment, tis a trifle too, well, continental for my taste. Why, tis oft over in mere moments. Whereas a full English execution keeps one entertained throughout the whole morning. Though I fail to see what this has to do with... God's breakfast! You... you mean... I am the one to be hung, drawn and quartered? Uh, well, yes, very possibly. I am afeard the only course left to you now is to humble yourself before the Queen. The stars suggest you might be able to convince her to look upon you as the son she never had. A naughty, wayward child who has rebelled against his parent. With time and patience, she may forgive you. Hmm. In truth, tis not the worst of ideas. And it might even clear the path for the possibility of... Yes, yes... Methinks this plan may serve me very well. Well, thank the God, because I thought we were taking this a whole different path than I, than I wanted. Good. The querent did wish to know how he might regain the Queen's favor following his failure to put down the Irish Rebellion. I did advise the querent to humble himself before the Queen as if he were her errant child. Methinks the querent was pleased with me for the reading I gave this day. Oh, 85 out of 100. Uh, methinks I shall find Her Majesty alone if I slip into the palace one morning and surprise her in her bedchamber. Okay, I was trying to go the non-seductive route, Mr. Robert, but whatever. Oh. Hey, study buddies. Oh, okay. Oh, getting things. Wait, what? Oh. Huh. <laughs> I was very confused. That was Netflix going off in the background. Uh, of course, we are ending the episode here. It's gone a little bit longer than normal. See you tomorrow, folks, and bye-bye.